hello everyone and welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be showing you how to make an effective lightning cream that doesn't give you dark knuckles or green base or any of that if you'd like to learn how to make this keep watching this video don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you find it helpful today i'm going to be showing you how to make a very very mild and effective um, lightning lotion this is my personal favorite because i just like the way it's very gentle on the skin it's very mild no knuckles no reaction of any sort because it's purely natural so if you're looking for something that is natural but still effective keep watching this just so that this video is not too lengthy i've gone ahead to measure out my ingredients i'm going to be telling you these ingredients and i'm going to be um leaving their um the percentage and the quantity on the screen i'm making a very little batch this is my own personal my own personal use so it's not really going to be a large quantity you can double triple this recipe however you like okay over here i have my waxes my emulsifier so i have my e-wax here i have my cetyl alcohol and i have my steric acid so let's just focus this okay yeah so this is my e-wax my cetyl alcohol and my steric acid so these are my emulsifiers my thickeners they are the foundation for making the cream they are going to make it um solid and moisturizing and all that good stuff okay over here i have my um cool down ingredients so these are my actives these are majorly my actives all my actives are going to be going into the cool down phase okay so this is my um alpha abitin this is my um tranexamic acid this is my edta and today i'm going to be telling you one powder that i use that um a lot of people don't use but it's very very effective it's much more effective than alpha abitin it's much more effective than hydroquinone and this is m phenyl white powder so this is m phenyl white powder um powder and like i said i'm going to leave there usage the percentages on the screen for you guys to see okay now if you want to keep seeing how i incorporate this into my formulation keep watching this video i have okay. my mango butter you can use mango you can use share you can use whatever butter you're comfortable with i will leave the percentage on the screen so i'm using my mango butter i like to incorporate butters like this because of their emollient properties they're very very good um for the skin as well as their occlusive properties okay so in here i'm going to be putting all the ingredients that are going into my oil phase okay so this is my waxes my oils my butters they're all going into my oil phase so i'm okay. going to add my sunflower oil i'm using sunflower oil at 10 percent i'm just going to use my I'm going to add all my ingredients that are going into the oil phase in here. My waxes, my emulsifiers, and my thickener. So now this is my oil phase. I'm going to measure out my water phase. And in my water phase, my heated water phase, I'm going to be using my water. I like to use my distilled water bottle because it helps me to create less of a mess and to store my water properly. Please remember this we're using distilled water. I'm going to be using this at I'm going to increase just a little because when you heat up your water you lose some of it. Okay, so just to be on the safe side. And then my heated water phase, I'm going to be using Xanthan gum. I did this off camera so you guys can just to save time. But when you're using Xanthan gum, you want to first disperse in vegetable glycerin so that when you add it to your production, it's not going to be lumpy. If you add Xanthan gum directly, it's going to be very, very lumpy. So doing it this way, dispersing it first, it's going to make sure that it gives you a nice consistency. 
In our other phase, we're going to be using DMI. Going to put the functions of DMI on the screen. Like I said, I don't want this to be a very long video. I'm going to be using it at 5 grams. So remember we're making a base cream. So some of these ingredients we're using at really, really high percentages because it is a base cream. Okay, so we're going to make more creams out of it. All right. Now we're going to use Royal Jelly. I'm going to put the functions of Royal Jelly. But Royal Jelly is sold as a supplement. Some people take it as a supplement. Some people take it as, you know, put it into creams. It's really, really good. And this is how it comes. Okay, we're going to be using this at 3%. So a little hole inside. Because if you cut this up, it will make a mess, as you can see. So I just do this, just a large enough hole so that everything comes out. This is our water. And our oil phase has been heated up to 25 degrees Celsius. So I'm just going to add they're both at the same temperature this is very important when you're making your cream you want to make sure that your oil and water are at the same temperature okay this is hot so as you can see our cream is forming so i just um stick blended this as you can see, our cream is fun. Um, it's forming, so we're going to allow it to cool a little because if we add our cool down ingredients now, it's going to um kind of kill it. So there's a reason why we're putting the cool down phase because these ingredients are very very susceptible to heat. So we're going to allow them to um, allow the cream to cool before we add them. So now it's cooled, we're going to go ahead and start adding our ingredients. All of these are going into the water, um, to the cool down phase. That's why I put all of them together. So our base is formed as you can see remember this is a base that's why it's very thick if you want to make it into a cream you reduce your waxes and increase your water okay so now the part that you've all been waiting for okay so how do we now make it into a really really active cream? all right now the secret ingredient is using these products from Batland. she has different like bases or milk so all of that this is what i use to make my um cream more effective it, this is obviously very strong on its own but it, with the help of the base it makes it even more natural okay so she has two milks she has the snow like snow white or white in base milk and then she has the extreme milk um you can use either of them this is usually pinkish okay so i think i've had this for a while that's why the color has changed but this is what i usually use this one is what I usually use. It's red, um, it's yellow. So this is what I usually use. And you can see very little left. So I'm just going to use it to mix the remainder. What I like to do is 50-50. I take 50% of my base. I add this 50% and then I stir it up together. And if it's too thick, I add a little bit of liquid because the truth is this base is already very, very, um, just take a little from here. These base, it's very very moisturizing on its own and you can see it's very 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 moisturizing on its own so probably don't need to add more oils to this all right so i take a little bit of that and I take you can see like i said 50 50 you can weigh it out and i'm just eyeballing it Okay, I'm going to go ahead to beat this. So this is my personal cream. I've added some more water, added other ingredients. 
I like my cream to be very moisturizing because that's just the secret to a glowing skin. A glowing skin is a moisturized skin, okay? So as you can see, that rubs in nicely. There's no white cast, nothing. We're going to go ahead to test the pH. I'm using pH strips for this. So this is our base cream. We want our base cream to be a pH of 6 because we want this cream to be of a neutral pH. We don't want it to be too acidic and we don't want it to be too alkaline on the skin. So this is a cream I mixed for a client using the extreme milk and as you can see that has turned red immediately that means it is acidic so I'm going to go ahead to add more base to that so that it goes into the pH of 4 because I want this cream to be around a pH of 4 that's what I want it to be okay and this is my own personal mix and I'm just checking the pH. I'm showing you guys the different pH so you don't think it's the same thing and there's no change when you add other base to this product, okay? So these are the different pH. I'm going to be matching them up against our pH scale so you guys can see closely. So, so the first one is my cream. It's at a pH of four because that's what I want it to be. And then this is the one that I initially mixed with Batlan as well. And I have balanced the pH, it is around four as well it's between four to five but it's not five just yet so this is the extreme base i'm going to check the ph because i want you guys to see in particular what i mean and then this ph is obviously acidic because the first line issues that it's orange and when i put it up against my scale it is definitely acidic okay so that's why you can't use it directly on your skin you have to you have to mix it with something or else it'll be too strong on your skin and so this screen won't give you dark knuckles. Thank you for watching. See you in my next video.